All right, so here we're going to be looking at the muscles of the upper body, looking at the shoulder joints and the arms and forearms today. So I just have labeled these as movers. I think that's kind of the best way to understand them. There are muscles that are moving the shoulder and by default then moving the whole arm, the upper arm and the lower arm. I'm going to name four of them. And two of them are kind of the same group. There's first the trapezius muscle. Uh, it gets its name from its trapezoidal shape. And this is a big muscle on your back. People like to have big traps. Well, this is what they're saying when they want big traps. It's typically this muscle that shows up. But notice your whole back is full of trap muscle. And this is obviously used to... Uh, lift the shoulder, but can also pull it back and down. And so this is, a, I think of it just as general shoulder movement. The next one is the levator scapulae, and you can just look at its name, and it tells you what it does. It levitates the scapula. And so its job is to pull the scapula up. It also adducts the scapula, adds the scapula to you, so pulls it towards the middle of your body and you can see that here as it could pull it toward the spine and then there's also the rhomboids they're a group major and minor just that's based on their their size and their ability here and their purpose is to stabilize the scapula keep it from doing more than it should and they're rhomboidal in shape i guess that's where they get their names from and so again just those four muscles for this region so arm movers, we're going to name nine different muscles, maybe maybe less than that. I think I don't I think I only have seven listed here, so we'll just talk about seven. And the purpose of these muscles is to move again the upper arm, um, maybe independent of the shoulder. And so they insert and they insert on and move the humerus. And some of them originate on the scapula. Some of them originate in the other parts of the axial skeleton. They, um, they are used for flexing and extending and adducting. Or, yeah, adducting. The three prime movers of the arm are the pectoralis major, which you see here. The pectoralis major. You, if this one contracts, what's it going to do to the arm? It's going to pull the arm toward the middle. So it adducts the arm medially. Then there's the lats on the back, and it is the opposite of the pectoralis major. It lowers the arm, it adducts um, or abducts a, the body away from the front, but toward the back. And so think of these two muscles, the pectoralis major and the latissimus dorsi, as acting opposite of one another. Very, Both of them very powerful muscles, the lats in particular, very, very powerful muscle. Anytime you pull something down, anytime you pull something towards you, your lats are involved in that. And then the deltoid. The deltoid is a relatively big muscle as well, and it um, abducts the arm, pulls the arm away from the body. So if you think about moving your arm from your side toward directly out bes beside you, that is what your shoulder, your deltoid is doing. It is abducting the whole arm. There are three other muscles here. I, yeah, I have a certain, you can see them here on this one as well. The uh, supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis, which is, I don't see subscapularis. We'll look at it here. These are the rotator cuff muscles. And if you think of your shoulder joint, think of rotating it, think of holding your arm out and rotating the, your arm and or rotating it for like throwing a ball or something like that. These are the muscles that are doing that. And they are collectively known as the rotator cuff. Again, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, suprascapularis, or subscapularis, and teres minor. And these are all smaller muscles and you can see they're all about the scapula and the arm and they're pretty easy to injure and so people who have uh they throw like base particularly baseball if you throw a ball it's really easy to uh injure your rotator cuff it can be a pretty painful and and a long recovery time because of their their location and the fact that you just use your arm so much 
All right, so next group is forearm movers. And so you think about your arm and you think about your upper arm and then think about your lower arm. What muscles are specifically moving your lower arm independent of the rest of your arm? And the ones that we think about, of course, are the biceps brachii. The bicep is the flexion of the forearm and a couple others for the flexion of the forearm. There's the brachialis, also a big mover in that. Uh, not oftentimes known, but it's underneath. You can see it here and behind the bicep. And then the brachioradialis, which goes from the humerus down here to the radius, hence its name. And then the posterior muscles of the arm are here. The big one, of course, that you need to be aware of is the triceps brachii. It's called the triceps because it has three origin heads up here. The biceps is called th two biceps because it has two origins. And this one extends the forearm. And so let's look at muscles of the forearm. Now, muscles of the forearm are interesting. And uh, as you can see, there's a whole lot more going on in the forearm that you probably would have thought. The forearm muscles are not only moving your hand, but they're also moving your individual fingers and your wrist. Um, there's a couple that we're going to look at here. There is the pronator teres down here and the pronator quadratus up here. And their job is to pronate the forearm. When you pronate the forearm, you're like rotating it inward when to pronate. Rotating, take your hand, your thumbs, and rotate them toward the middle. You're pronating your arm right there. There is the flexor carpi radialis. So think about your your wrist, flexor carpi radialis. And it is, if this, this hand is facing up, it is abducting the hand. All right. And then the extensor carpi radialis, what is it doing to the, stand, the hand? It is extending the hand. And then you have two more muscles. I don't think I have another picture. I do have another picture. They are the flexor and extensor digitorum. You see the extensor digitorum here, and then you see the flexor digitorum here. And so just think about a minute, what, what are these muscles doing? The flexor and the extensor digitorum, they are flexing and extending the hand and the fingers, digits.